The Institute for Faith and Freedom at Grove City College presents Meet the Scholars with your host, Senior Student Fellow, Grace Riley. Hello and welcome to Meet the Scholars. My name is Grace Riley and today the Institute for Faith and Freedom is happy to welcome Dr. Glenn Marsh. Dr. Marsh is a professor of physics at Grove City College. His research interests include the structure and functions of cytochromes P450, the explorations of faith and science, and the structure and functions of damaged DNA. Dr. Marsh, thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. So just to begin, what drew you to Grove City College? Well, I've known about Grove City as a bulwark, I think, of fairly of conservative thought, uh, but also fine academics for a long time. And a job came open, and I thought that might be for me. And I was at a place that I loved, very fine place. But the fact that we had such a large and active physics program and the fact that they were, I found out when I talked to uh, Mr. Leo, who used to teach here, that they were looking to start a course called Studies in Science, Faith, and Technology. I said, man, I got to check that out. Because that's the kind of a course uh, dealing with the exploration of science and faith that I've wanted to teach for a long time. And so uh, I was hired to help develop that course. So that was one of the big calling cards for me. It was just the active physics program and the SSFT course that I helped develop. Yeah, so you mentioned that course mm -hmm. about science and faith, and I actually took that here at Grove mm -hmm. City, and it was a really good course. But going off of that, how do you incorporate faith into the study of science in your classrooms? Well, I think science is intrinsically a Christian endeavor, so I don't, I don't need to add some mm -hmm. pious special sauce to it in one sense. That is to say, um, science can be done poorly, but when we look at the philosophical, theological, and historical roots of science, we see that Almost all of the early scientists were believers, with, the, with very few exceptions. And that was because of, due to theological considerations, people looked at the universe a certain way that they could not do if they had pagan assumptions. Things that pertain to the attributes of God, for example. And so therefore, um, a, a Christian shouldn't need to think, well, my goodness, uh, I'm going to do science for a living, but I guess I'd better be a materialist a uh, methodological materialist before I can go into this lab and do science. No, I would say something very controversial, which is that actually scientists have to become methodological Christians in order to really do science, because the roots of science are, are, are in theological considerations of God, and therefore how we see the universe as a unified whole, for example. So, um, and, but, but I tell students that because they don't hear that. That's not what they hear. They hear, you must put aside your faith to do science. And I would say, no, you don't. Your faith is actually intrinsic, and the fact that the secular academy has lost that doesn't mean that they're right and that we need to jettison theology and, and Christianity. We don't. Yeah, absolutely. And I think part of that, too, is the fact that just focusing mm -hmm. on science from a secular mm -hmm. perspective leaves some questions unanswered that theology then can you know, mm -hmm. answer. So what would you say to that and just the questions that Christianity kind of answers and fills in the blanks for that secular science leaves? So the, whole, the issue is, what is the basis of truth? Um, the radical positivist might say that only that thing which can be perceived by the senses, i.e. through empirical experimentation, leads to truth and everything else is spurious. And what I would say is, is that uh, there are many avenues to truth and science is one of them. And in fact, I would argue that science is especially powerful when we limit it to what it can really address and answer. Um, questions about how does the physical universe, and that would include biology, right, functions. And um, science can't address reasons of, um, can't address issues of meaning, for example, or art or aesthetics or things of that nature. So God gave us many avenues of truth of which science is one, a very important one, but nonetheless one. And so therefore, any society which needs to address a question needs to think about if there are scientific roots to it, like, for example, coronavirus pandemic, right? Scientists have a lot to teach. Right? We, we need to know what the virologists are saying, but we also 
You need to listen to the economists, the theologians, the philosophers, the politicians, and other people who have to weigh in, right, to yeah. dictate what we do. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, the point that you're making, too, is that science and truth also go hand in hand and they support each other. Um, which is really incredible and I think shows that you don't have to put your faith aside to look at something scientific because they go together. And one of the things I, I say in SSFT a lot is science is sometimes seen as being a weird thing. You know, people go, oh, yeah, those people that do physics, they're really strange people. And that may be true in some cases, right? But the fact of the matter is science is a deeply human endeavor and so therefore we share many things with other disciplines because mm -hmm. there's overlap. In fact, the philosophers have this idea of problem of demarcation, where it's almost impossible to really define precisely what is science and what is not science. And so if you think about faith, faith has got an empirical basis to some degree. What did the Apostle Paul say in 1 Corinthians 15? He's trying to support the resurrection. He said, I, I observe Christ. The apostles, the disciples observed Christ, and he appeared to 500 others. So he's appealing to evidence in the way that a scientist or at least a good historian might. And now faith is more than that. Faith is assent to a being, to Christ himself, who is Lord and Savior, right? And trust in him. Faith is more than just evidence, but evidence is a part of it. So the idea that there is this complete separation between what scientists do and what theologians do is not true. And likewise, theologians, and likewise scientists, in order to do science, have to depend on presuppositions about the world that are not rooted in science in order to do science. So there's a lot of overlap there. Yeah, absolutely, and that's very well said. So before we close, what are some things that you're working on right now that you'd like to share with our audience? Well, I think um, one of the things I'm trying to do is build the medical physics program. So um, we have a very active physics department. We encourage young people interested in physics to check us out. We have a, a, a dynamic active department and in particular I'm teaching the medical physics courses and I'm really excited about them. So I do a course in diagnostic imaging, I do a course in basically radiation oncology and um, we all know that uh, the medical profession is needed more than ever with an aging population um, of whom I am now one mm -hmm. and um, medical physics is a wonderful well-paying degree that serves people who are in need. And um, if you are interested in studying medical physics or physics in general, uh, check us out because we, we'd love to have you and we would love to have you study with us. Yeah, well, thank you so much for joining me. Mm -hmm. well, I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much for speaking with me. Thank you. And thank you for joining and for listening today. Mm -hmm. I encourage you to check out Dr. Marsh's research and work and the rest of the work that the Institute for Faith and Freedom puts out, both on our website and on our YouTube channel and podcast channels. I encourage you also to check out the rest of the season of Meet the Scholars, and we hope to see you next time.